The new DJI Mobile 2 has been in my hands for a couple weeks now and I've actually really come to like it. Uh, it's of course had some complaints from people saying it feels cheap or you know it's missing things, buttons are wrong, that sort of thing. But I actually really, really enjoy it. Um, first off, let's start with the, the build quality. It is really plasticky. Um, in fact, everything on it is plastic. Uh, it doesn't feel super high end, but it's 129 bucks. So I don't know what sort of crazy high-end thing that you're expecting to have, um, but for 129 bucks, this thing is solid. It's awesome. Um, I'm concerned about breaking it, but I'm not gonna be devastated if I do. Just overall, it seems like a really good uh, stabilizer for your phone. So over the last couple weeks with uh, my testing, I've found things that I like about it and things that I don't like. Um, starting off with things that I don't like, I'm sort of disappointed that uh, they've changed some of the button layout and everything, but if you're new to having a stabilizer for a phone, that's not gonna be something that bothers you. Uh, secondly is it makes it tough to add accessories onto here. I'm probably going to try to figure out how to mount hot shoes or other mounts on here so that way I'll be able to add on microphones and lights easily. Uh, right now there's not really anywhere to stick stuff into and use. Um, one thing that I have thought of is getting kind of like a dummy USB plug uh, to have on there so that way you can have something right on the front but we'll find out. Uh, later when I start messing around with that. But so far I've just been trying to use the stabilizer itself uh, with my phone and basically see what footage I get. Otherwise, I don't really have many complaints about it. Uh, the last thing I guess is on the actual joystick knob itself. They still have it set up to where you can't uh, turn left or right and up and down at the same time. So, you know, you can move the joystick and have the camera move, you know, left and right or up and down. But if you try to hold the joystick kind of down at an angle, it either chooses to, to move and turn or to point up or down, which is kind of a bummer because sometimes you want to be able to, you know, pan smoothly. But now with the DJI Go app, um, there's very easy ways to set up automatic um, motion and everything with the camera itself. So that's really cool. Balancing the phone on there is super easy. Um, there's two knobs and it's darn near foolproof. And I've even found if it's not quite spot on, it'll still balance out fine and, and work well. Of course, battery life is probably going to be affected because the motors are gonna to have to be working a little bit more to overcome that balance issue. Um, but getting it spot on for balance is really easy to do. And um, you know, before my concern was always like, okay, well, if I take this phone out and I put a different case on or I swap phones or somebody wants to borrow it, is it gonna take you know five minutes of sitting there and messing with it? And it really doesn't. I mean, you put the phone on there, it takes me longer to put the phone on than it does to actually make adjustments. Um, but then once, of course, it's set up for my phone, I don't really need to adjust anything even when I take it on or off um, because when I pop it back on, the spring-loaded clamp makes it nice and easy to center back on there again. Another disappointing thing that I found about the Osmo Mobile 2 is when you're moving the phone this way, it seems to be really limited. So it should be able to go quite a bit more, um, but it doesn't. And I think they're trying to prevent you from hitting the arms and everything on here. Um, but it'd be nice if it had a setting to where you could tell it like, hey, I wanna be able to um, turn it more basically and, and have it work in that mode. Audio on this is actually pretty good. The gimbal motors make virtually no sound. I've never had uh, any footage where I, I can tell that the motors are on there. Um, unfortunately, the day that I was testing, it was really windy. So bear in mind that I do have uh, kind of a voiceover on that, just to be talking about what I'm doing anyway. Um, but sound quality itself has been really decent and it just uses your phone anyway. So as long as your phone audio works pretty decently, then you should expect to have decent audio on your footage. Battery life has also been really awesome on this. Uh, literally, I charged it up the first day and I've been using it for like a week straight and haven't had any issues. So I don't see uh, you know, any problems with that. It's rated at 16 hours. I don't know what it actually comes out to be, um, but I know before with my Osmo, it was like if I wasn't turning it on and off in between all the shots, it was getting like 35 minutes to an hour maybe. Um, so it's really nice having a nice battery life on there. Speaking of battery life, battery life when you're running the DJI Go app kills the phone battery. Um, there's been several times where I'll be at like 70% and I'll put this in, use it for you know 10 or 15 minutes and I'll be down to like 30 or 40%. So battery life on your phone, um, expect that to be going down very quickly if you're using this. Uh, they do have a USB port on here so you can plug your phone in and charge it. However, 
Um, doing so doesn't work when the Osmo is on. Um, so basically if you're going you know, to and from somewhere, that's fine, but don't expect to be charging it and using it at the same time. So far, I've had a really positive experience with the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. Um, things have been really well. It's always worked. It connects quickly, um, which is problems I've had before with my other Osmo where it would take a while to actually connect. Of course, that was the original Osmo, so the camera itself was a little bit better than what I've got on the phone here. However, um, you know, setup time and delay and everything like that took a while. So the fact that I can just throw this on here, get some cool footage, um, and then upload it immediately because it's all saved on the phone is really convenient. I think one of my favorite things about the uh, Osmo Mobile 2 is the tripod connector on the bottom. It makes it super easy to add on tripods and accessories, uh, at least on the bottom. So usually I'll just have a small little tripod and that way when I get somewhere, I can just place it down and it stands up all by itself. Or of course, I'm gonna, if I wanna throw it on a larger tripod or anything else like that, it's gonna be super easy to do. I've also experienced a few issues when using 4K30 on my phone. Uh, I've seen some people complain that their phone might be capable of 120 or 240 FPS and inside the, the mobile app, it does not show that. Um, so I'm waiting for some updates on that to make sure that we get all of our actual frame rates available that the phone uses. Um, the other issue I've noticed is when using 4K30 um, and I'm moving or pounding, it almost seems like there's uh, dropped frames uh, in the camera itself. And I did a back-to-back -back where I, I'm using the DJI Go app and then shooting 4K 30, and then I switch over to regular, just the regular camera mode on the phone, and I don't have the same issue. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but I have seen a few other people complain about that on the uh, first Osmo Mobile. So I'm hoping that that will be fixed with the firmware update because Otherwise, when I'm using the camera normally, I don't have that. Now that's not to be confused with the image stabilization that's built into the phone where it can kind of make the corners and edges a little wavy or wiggly. Um, this just seems like dropped frames altogether and makes for footage that doesn't look all that smooth. And right now I did find that while doing time lapses, hyperlapses and that kind of thing, the screen on the phone would turn off. Uh, I would set it to basically not turn off ever, um, but about 10 or 15 seconds into it, it would cut off and go black basically. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but of course, again, firmware update should fix that and take care of that. Now it's important to note that when the screen does turn off and it's doing a hyperlapse or time lapse, the camera is still recording. So you don't have to worry about losing footage or anything like that. Um, but again, if you're just trying to watch and see what it's doing, then of course you're not going to be able to because the screen is off. Everything else about the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 though seems to be really positive. It works well, the buttons are responsive, um, it balances properly, the motion and, and you know movement on it is really smooth. So I'm really happy about it. And the fact that it's only 130 bucks is fantastic because before it was difficult to justify for you know people just doing casual um, you know, video blogs or YouTube videos to spend three, four hundred dollars on a stabilizer. But now that you can get something that's you know 120, 130 bucks and works this well and is so simple to use, um, big pro. And I really suspect that, uh, of course, the competition who you know make one similar to this, that prices on those are going to have to really drop in order to actually be competitive. Um, because at 129 bucks, I don't know why you wouldn't buy this. Take a look at some of this footage and let me know what you think. And here's some walking footage of uh, me walking up the hill here. And this is shot in the app and you can see there's a couple times where it almost skips um, and it's dropping frames or doing something weird. And it has to do with the app because if I shoot in 1080, it doesn't do it. Or if I switch over and I'm using the regular camera app, it doesn't do it either, which I do right here. Um, and you can see that again, it doesn't seem to have the the frame drop or stuttering so again I think it's just gonna have to be or come down to a, a firmware update I know I've did a little bit of research and it seemed like other people had that issue before yeah but I haven't seen that problem come up in a while so I think that it'll get fixed uh, on the Osmo Mobile 2. And this clip right here was shot, this is just the front facing camera. Um, it was really windy, but quality actually came out really, really good, a, a lot better than I thought it would be, um, you know, based on just using the front camera only, or the front facing camera anyway. Now, this is another issue that I don't know if it's a problem with actual uh, 
phone itself and the, the software, but when I select a different frame rate, when I hit done, it goes back to the main menu and it does it about half the time. And I think it's because it thinks I'm clicking on the home button, which is right next to done. Um, and it kicks me back to the menu, but I tried to be careful as I could uh, to get that taken care of, uh, not click that, but it still seemed to happen anyway. So although it kicked me back to the home screen, it wasn't too bad. I just had to hit camera again. And then right here, we've got uh, just kind of some raw footage basically. So the, the screen obviously on the uh, right hand shows what the mobile phone is recording. And then the other one just shows me basically walking around with it. And this is a clip if I was not holding or not using the Osmo Mobile. So this is just me hand holding the phone while hiking up this hill, which is kind of uh, slippery and has lots of loose rocks. Back again, now on the Osmo Mobile 2. And then I also set up a uh, motion lapse here. So basically it, they make it really easy. So you just point it um, at your first spot, you tap on the little plus and it saves that spot in that frame. You move it to the next location, wherever you want it to pan over to and uh, hit the little plus there again. And you can keep adding those on there basically and then change the setting for how quickly you want it to do so and how long of a uh, motion or you know kind of a time lapse thing you want. And it'll tell you how long the video will be um, this is sped up, of course, but then it goes through and uh, it records that video. So there is what you end up with. And this right here is a hyperlapse. So basically you select an item on the screen and it uh, will make sure it always points at it as you walk around. Obviously our flag needs replacing here. So I'm looking forward to testing out and using all the other shot modes on the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. Um, but this kind of wraps it up for the uh, short little review here, but I'm gonna be using it a lot more since it's so convenient and uh, gets really awesome footage.